Hey guys, this video is about tabbing, and more specifically, pre-drilling a tab to see if we can lower tool engagement and make for a more reliable and consistent cut. This video started out as a proven cut request for a knife maker that was tabbing out blades and having an issue with tool life. So I looked into it a little bit and through simulations I came up with a little idea. This is an example of a slot and harder material with triangular tabs. Low depth of cut, but as you can see, you have full tool engagement on that lower ramp. Pretty aggressive angle. Now when you pre-drill, you're almost side cutting the whole time, which means your uh, cut should be more consistent, should be more reliable because your load stays the same. Also an interesting thing about pre-drilling is your holes leave a space for the chips to fall through. And when you're not recutting chips, that's always a bonus. To set up the pre-drills, it's a little bit easier than you might think. For your tab spots, you can actually select points. So all you have to do is go into your sketch, draw your points, space the distance away from your drill bit, from the end of your tab. And then I actually gave, uh, I think about 10 thou extra on the wall just to make sure my drill bit wasn't going to touch the finish at all. So simulations are great, but let's see what happens in real life. The first piece of material I grabbed was a chunk of 1018 steel and as I soon found out that was a little too soft and this Tormach 1100MX pretty much just mowed through it. I mean I plunged down half inch straight, no problem. <laughs> it's kind of funny and <laughs> I actually spent the day just slotting uh, as much as possible just to see what kind of angle I could get out of the tool and what would happen. Since the 1018 was a little soft to show the differences. I then grabbed a piece of titanium 6AL4V and proceeded to slot this without coolant. This is not a good idea, but with coolant it's just hard to see. So I used uh, an air blast and got a free little fireworks show. Do not try this at home. Okay, so the 1018 didn't really show what I wanted to show and titanium is just not really suited for dry slotting. So the next piece of material I picked out was a block of D2. I then proceeded to run two different tests side by side, a pre-drill test and a non-pre-drill test. And I wanted to see what kind of differences there were. Even though our D2 tool steel is in annealed state, it still measures out to be around a 35 Rockwell hardness compared to 4140, which I measured out to be around 20. So that means it's a tough material, it's a pretty strong material, and I wanted to use standard tooling just to see what kind of results we would get. First tool path I used was a deep drilling cycle and I used a coated quarter inch high speed drill with coolant and even though it wasn't ideal, I kept the SFM low to keep the heat out of the cut and the drill did survive. Now, if I want to do a production run, I would choose a cobalt drill, which they're much better suited in harder materials, or a carbide drill if you have a rigid machine and the power to push it through. Uh, I love carbide drills, they're just silent and they just leave these just perfect holes. Next. To so slot the part out and leave tabs, I used a contour toolpath, and the tool I used was a Lakeshore Variable 4 Flute for Steel with a 15 thou rad. This tool seems to be a pretty good do-it-all end mill, and the radius corner just means you're not going to just chip out that flute and your tool's going to be done. So I kind of like using the radius corners, especially when I'm pushing a machine in a tough material. The slotting depth was 30 thou and without a ramp, so I used multiple depths and I plunged into the pre-drilled hole from before. Now, I may have been a little conservative with the chip load, but for slotting, I tend to half everything just to be on the safe side, and I don't know how many of these tools I had, so I didn't want to just break one after another, so I did start kind of slow. And I did go by the chip color, chips coming off, were nice and straw colored, I didn't get into the blues or purples, and the machine sounded pretty nice and smooth, so I left it. Now in hindsight, I probably should have increased the plunge rate because it was plunging into nothing, you know, into a pre-drilled hole. So I could have just increased that quite a bit to speed up the toolpath. Now what's cool about this is with the pre-drilled holes, your tool's side cutting pretty much 100% of the time. And you don't have that sudden load increase of a plunge on the other end of a tab. Even a triangular tab does increase the load as it's going down the other side. Another benefit that I found was that these pre-drilled holes also allowed for more chip clearance and chips would just kind of flow down and out. And even with the attest that I did in aluminum and other materials, same thing happened. So kind of cool little side benefit. Now let's watch the slotted part 
that didn't have the pre-drilled holes. We'll use the same feeds and speeds as before. And you can definitely hear a load increase during the plunge on the tabs. Some of the chips did start to turn a little bit more vibrant color, indicating either I had more heat in the cut or there might have been some tool wear. This could be due to our conservative chip load, but I didn't run enough tests to find out. I did notice some other differences though, and I'll talk about that in the conclusion. The test part did show much less tool deflection on the sidewalls with the slotting tool path that was pre-drilled. The cut sounded better and more consistent, and also chip evacuation way better with the pre-drilled holes. All right, so it's hard for me to tell you how well this really worked because we only made two cuts. But if this was my job, if this was my part, if I had to slot with tabs day in, day out, there's no reason why I wouldn't pre-drill. I did not see any downsides to that besides a little bit of added cycle time but if the trade-off is increased tool life, then I think I'd give that up. Now, this technique's pretty new to me because coming from the desktop machines, I could never really run a drill because it was all high RPM, low torque, and hoses don't really mix. If you do run a hobby machine and you wanna use a technique like this, you can always spot your pre-drilled places, take your part off, go to a drill press, drill your holes, Put your part back in the machine and it should work just fine. And I know because I've cut steel, a good amount of steel on a CNC router. It takes a little bit more time, but definitely works. So there you go. This is a technique that I had never really done before that looks super cool. And it might help you with your tool life when you're machining harder materials, especially when slotting out of sheets and where you want to leave tabs. But I don't make knives. Grimsma makes knives. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for sticking with us, guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helps someone. Um, if you've used this technique, please leave some comments and uh, come back next time. See you later, guys.